So, um, one of the last time, let's just remind ourselves what we were talking about. We we're talking about big O notation. So here's the definition up there at the top. Um, and in particular, what we want to recall is uh, that this gives us sort of a, a pretty precise way of saying that one thing behaves um, like another, right? So that uh, if we want to talk about how much time it takes to run a, uh, an algorithm of some sort, then, uh, then we've got a way to do that. So, um, right, so let's just remember that uh, our, uh, our algorithm for bubble sort on average seemed to be O n squared, and worst case scenario was O n squared. So I did kind of some thinking yesterday, and I was like, you know, the best case scenarios just don't seem quite right uh, to me. So um, let me go over to my sheet here. Oops, wrong browser. And uh, let me put this on the screen so you guys can see it. So we want document camera here. And um, I want the sheet. And then I want to switch the source to Safari. Window capture Dr. C's Casino. Okay, here we go. So, um, oh, and I should put Twitch on this computer also. So we can ban anybody who's trying to sell me subscribers like last time. Okay, so, um, so what I did is I, uh, I added a couple of rows here uh, to my sheet, and I sat down and calculated the formulas for the minimum number of operations, like the, the theoretical minimum, not the minimum that, that happened to occur. Uh, and then same thing for the maximum. And uh, what I ended up finding was that uh, I actually programmed, or the way I programmed it, had a best case scenario that was order n squared. And a worst case scenario that was order n squared. Okay, so uh, I want to make a distinction here between uh, the idea of the bubble sort algorithm versus how I implemented it. Right, because those aren't necessarily the same thing. And excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I really need to put a mute button on my little deck here so that I can not sneeze on the the live on the internet. But eh, I'll do that after class. Uh, anyway, so um, my implementation of uh, <clears throat> the algorithm, uh, meaning the way that I programmed it is not necessarily the best case scenario. Um, and, and that's what ended up finding. So if we look at um, <clears throat> what did we notice about <clears throat> the theoretical best versus the theoretical worst, or maybe better put, our sort of observed best versus our observed worst, what, uh, what relationship did they seem to have? I mean, obviously, the observed best is better than the observed worst, right? That, that's no shock. Um, but say, look at uh, row number three there that I've got highlighted and compare that with the row at the very bottom. What do you notice? Mm -hmm. It's double. Okay. And so what I wanted to kind of do is explain why that was the case. Um, so let me open up uh, Adam here with our code. and. Um, let me, uh, let me open up the original version. Uh, 
this guy and then get it on the screen so that everybody can see it at home. Uh, so I need to switch to full screen. Okay, that should get everybody. Let's just double check on the stream feed here. Um, that you guys can actually see it. Twitch has a bit of a delay, which is mildly annoying, but whatever. Um, okay, so it should should be working. Uh, no, it's not. Of course not. Uh, so let's go into this, and then we'll do um, uh, Atom, Window Capture, this one. Okay. Um, so now you guys should be able to see... Um, see the code. Um, all right, so let's kind of think about why this at best is going to take n squared, roughly n squared operations, and also at worst why it's going to take roughly n squared operations. So the, to do that, we have to do a little bit of math, unfortunately. So we've got here basically two nested for loops, right? So let's say that the outer for loop um, so not this outer for loop, but like you've just in general have nested for loops. Let's say that the outer for loop runs 10 times and the inner for loop runs eight times. How many times does the inner for loop actually run? 80. Okay, how did you get 80? Uh, lucky guess. But why is it 80, Owen? Yeah, it's for every iteration of the outer for loop, eight iterations. Right, exactly. So if you do ten iterations of the outer for loop and each iteration of the outer for loop has eight of the inner one, then that's called multiplication, right? So it'd be ten times eight or eighty. Um, and so that's kind of the situation we have here, but it's a little the math is a little bit more annoying because well, first off, how many iterations do we have of the outer loop? That one's a little easier to see, but of course we got Python problems here. All right, so for i in range n minus one, what does that mean in Python? We have to be careful. What's the starting value of i? Did I specify? It doesn't look like it's specified, but I did. It's zero. Okay. Um, and uh, um, what about the ending value? What does it look like it is? Okay, this is, yeah, this is Python. Uh, it, it's basically 0 to n minus 2. Okay, why is it 0 to n minus 2? Well, because the guy who made Python just, so you remember, this was, I guess, what, a week ago or so, when, when we talked about iterative structures, the thing at the end is not included. So this means that we go zero up through n minus two, not zero up through n minus one. So n minus one is the first number not included. Is that... Am I speaking in hieroglyphics right now? Well, okay, that's just because. Why? It's just because, right? He, that's the way he made the language. Okay, so, um, well, okay, let me just demonstrate th this. Um, so let me just say um, uh, 4i in range uh, 5 print i. Okay, this is the, the world's lamest program, right? That's all it's going to do. So let me save this. It's lame.py. Let's run it. And then let me switch the screen over for those of you who are at home to the terminal. Oops. 
Okay, so I've got my code in the terminal, so let's execute this thing. Where is the heck is my terminal? There we are. Um, so where do I need to be? I need to be in Dropbox, Wabash, Teaching, CSC 101, F20, Alg Analysis, and then it's... Okay, so the writing for I in range five printed, and then I printed the value of I, what got printed? Zero through four, okay? So in our real algorithm, when we see for I in range N minus one, what's the starting value of I? Zero. What's the largest value of I? N minus two, because it's one less than the thing that I typed. Okay? Huh? Well, because what's N minus one minus one? I know it's early, man, but. Huh? N minus one minus one. It's like N is five, right? Oh, sorry. I see what you mean. Okay, uh, forget that n was five. It was in the previous, the, the example that in our lame.py. n is a number. Do you know what its value is? Not right this instant. So if I go up to n minus one, or I type n minus one, then what do I really go up to? I go up to whatever the value is of n minus N minus two, because it's one less than the thing I typed. Yeah? Man, you guys are dead this morning. Huh? Say it again. Do I need to, like, make you all do jumping jacks or something? All right. Well, then on your feet, Cole. You said yes. You sure? Okay. This would be, like, uh, one of the things I learned in teacher training 101. Uh I, ooh, damn it, if I could get the lights back. There we go. That's better. Uh, so you remember I told you guys about my uh, my dear algebra teacher, Mrs. Gurley? Yeah, whose maiden name was Manly? Yeah? Um, you guys remember that part, right? Well, she was also the coach of the math team. And me being a giant nerd, you know, I totally, I heard the announcement about math club on the you know, the overcom in sixth grade and was like, oh, that sounds fun. I'll go see what that's all about. And yeah, big shock, right? Yeah, it did. Um, so anyway, we would go and do these competitions and one of the, the, it was like a series of four events. So you had like mental math and then being able to use a calculator really fast and then like actual math and then there was a science competition which when i started doing this actually it's the science stuff that i liked not the math believe it or not uh and then i then i discovered algebra right so for how many of you guys was the worst day of all days in math class was when the alphabet suddenly got involved Right, so first it was numbers, and then there was numbers and also letters. Right, for, for many people, that's like when the math world went downhill to them. Right, for me, that was like, oh, wow, this is cool. Um, anyway, so, um, <clears throat> so the calculator thing, there was a particular kind of calculator that if you could master how to use it, you could be really, really fast because it used a different input scheme called reverse Polish notation, which sounds crazy, but, and it's not a joke, right? It's not a, a joke against Poles or whatever. Bunch of Polish logicians uh, came up with this way to rewrite arithmetic in it and so that you used fewer symbols to encode the same information that you would in the sort of normal way that we write the order of operations. So it's just a different way of expressing things. Uh, and it turns out to be really handy in, in formal logic. Well, anyway, 
<clears throat> Hewlett Packard made a series of calculators that used this as their input scheme. So like, let's say that you wanted to do three plus three, you, or three plus four. On a normal calculator, what would you do? Three plus four, enter or equals or whatever, right? On this, you would do, and it sounds bad here, you would do three enter four plus, and then it would add them. Now that seems silly right then, but what about if the three was the result of a previous computation? Then you could actually speed things up a bit, right? Uh, so anyway, um, so I decided that I would buy one of these. So, you know, I went and was like, Mom, can I have $50? And she's like, for what? Because normally it would be like, I want $50 for a video game or whatever. It's like for a calculator. She's like, oh, okay. All right, here you go. Uh, you guys should have tried that when you were kids, right? And like, yeah, I need I need this book for school. This book for school. No. Uh, anyway, so I, I take the money and I go to Mrs. Gurley's room. And it's during class, and uh, and so I come in and I said, singing telegram. Like, I've got the money for the calculator, but I'm here as a messenger, so it's a singing telegram. And because I said that, she made me sing something. And so I had to make up, like, I have the money for the calculator, or something, right? I don't remember. Um, I mean, what I should have done was like a riff off J.G. Wentworth. Because you guys all know this song, right? 877 cash now. No? Okay. Yeah, all right. Well, well, or 800-588-2. Right, okay. Uh, Empire. Boom. All right, anyway. So, um, why did I bring that up? I have no idea why I brought that up. Oh, yeah, jumping jacks. And and so I was going to call your bluff on that, just like Ms. Mrs. Gurley called my bluff on the singing telegram. Okay, there we go. All right, conversation finished. Now we can go back to what we're here to do, right? Mm -hmm. Operation Distract McKinney is working flawlessly. Um, okay, so... If I had for i in range 5, then that means I start with 0 and I end with 4, one less than the thing I typed, okay? So, if I have in my real program i in range n minus 1, then what's the starting value of i? 0. What's the ending value of i? 1 less than what I typed, which was n minus 1, and last time I checked, n minus 1 minus 1 is n minus 2. Okay, so whatever n is, it's going to be one less than that, or two less than that, rather. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, great. Now, what is n in our program? It's the length of my array, right? So 5, 10, 15, something like that. Basically, just how many cards am I sorting was what that number was, okay? All right, so do we buy that? Yes? Okay, great. So how many times does the outer loop run? It starts with i equals 0, and it ends with i equals n minus 2. How many times does it run? E Good try. n minus 1. That's what you said, right? Yeah, okay. All right, why is it n minus 1, Cole? No, like, like Cause seriously. Because there's, there's a zero. Because we start at zero, right? And so if I do zero, one, two, three, four, how many things have I done? And I think that's the reason why Guido von Rossum, who made Python, uh, made, wrote the range thing that way to exclude the number you type. Because if I do range n minus one, or say range five, I still I have five things, but I start at zero, so I go zero up through four. Okay, is that all right? Yeah. 
Okay, I can kind of see maybe what he was going for here, but um, I wouldn't have designed it that way. Uh, but I'm not Guido von Rossum. I mean, he, he designed Python, and I think he started working on it in like 1990 or so. Right, I was in second grade in 1990. You guys were not even born in 1990. Huh? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> he hasn't, right? I mean, programming languages evolve over time. Um, so, uh, you know, in that sense, they're kind of like human languages uh, in that they do evolve over time. But maybe one thing that's different between them and human languages is that they evolve more quickly. Um, so, like, French in 1990 versus French today is there basically any difference, right, other than new slang words that get thrown in, um, you know, or like, uh, there probably wasn't a word for internet in 1970s French, there is now, right, uh, you know what it is, the internet, <laughs> right, uh, I think, uh, so, Anyway, so, you know, human languages take a lot longer to evolve. Uh, now, is there a difference between French from 1700 and French today? Oh, big time. You want to hear French from 1700? What do you do? Go to Quebec. <laughs> uh, I'm not entirely exaggerating, but have you ever been to Quebec? Huh? Quebec. It's uh, pronounced Quebec en français. So... Or Montreal, which is Montreal, but in French you don't say the T because in French you don't say half of the letters, which is annoying. But um, anyway, uh, okay, so right, so the outer loop runs n minus one times. Okay, do we accept that? Okay, the inner loop, that's the one that's a little trickier to analyze. Because what is its ending value? And let me uh, switch back over on the thing here for everybody at home. What is the ending value of my inner loop? Right, n minus i minus, well, really 2, right, because of the, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, okay. So n minus i minus 2 is the last value of the inner loop, and the uh, first value is 0. Okay, so how many times does the inner loop run? Well, it's going to run, <clears throat> it's, the number of times it runs depends on, how many, on where we are in the outer loop. Okay, this makes the algebra and the arithmetic a little harder to think about, but let's just think about it this way. What's the starting value of i? Zero. Okay, that's the outer loop. So, let's say i is zero. Then, how many times for, for i equals zero, how many times does the inner loop run? Well, it goes from zero to n minus zero minus two, which means it ran n minus one times. Yeah? Why is it n minus 1? Because we, where do we start? We started with 0. If i is 0, then what that really is saying is j in range 0 to n minus 0 minus 1. Okay? So it looks like range n minus 1. Well, how many things are there there? I go 0 all the way up through n minus 2 for a total of n minus 1 things. Yes? Or no? Is it too early in the morning for algebra? Yeah? Um, why did you have to include the 0? I didn't. Oh, okay. I think I, yeah, maybe that's what's confusing you guys. So, let me, let me just type them in both cases so it's consistent. So, 
His question was, why did I have the zero there, but not in the one above? I was just being sloppy. Like, so let me just put them both there, and that way we, we're set. Right? What is the starting value for both of them? Okay, the question is, what's the ending value? For the outer loop, the ending value is n minus 2 for a total of how many things? n minus 1, because we started at 0. Okay, the inner loop, where do we start? How many things depends on the value where we are in the outer loop. Okay, so the outer loop, the i, could be any number between 0 and n minus 2. Yes? Let's say it starts at 0. Okay? So if that's the case, so let me actually go over to the iPad and sketch, write some of this out. Um, Okay, so let me just write what the, the loop is on the iPad so that everybody at home can see it at the same time. All right, so what was our loop? We had four i in range, zero to n minus one. And then we had four j in range, zero through n minus i minus one. And then we had stuff. Okay, yes. Yep. Uh, yes. And so the one at the beginning of class, though, we had a constant number of inner loops for each outer loop, right? So think of it this way. If I had the outer loop that runs 10 times, which is kind of like what I have here, right? The outer loop runs a specific number of times. It doesn't change, right? This one, the inner loop runs more times when I is small and fewer times when I is big. Because what does the inner loop go up to? N minus I minus 1. So it depends on where we are in the outer loop. Okay, so let me contrast that. So good question. Let me contrast that with this. Okay, how many times does the outer loop run? Five times, right? Four values of i, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, five numbers, okay? How many times for each value of i, how many times does the inner loop run? Seven, right? J would range 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 6 for a total of seven values, yes? Okay, so for each value of i, the inner loop runs seven times. There are five values of the outer loop, so how many times would stuff get executed here? 35 times, right? Five times seven. Okay, what's different about the bubble sort algorithm, or at least the, the one that we're looking at, the version of it that we're looking at, is that... So for the, the bottom example, the inner loop runs seven times, regardless of what the value of i is. Yes? That's not the case in the bubble uh, sort thing. There, the inner loop runs, how many times does it run? Well, what is the ending value of j? Uh, in the top, uh, so above the red line. What's the ending value of j? n minus i minus 2. Okay, and if I start at 0, how many things did I just do? I did n minus i minus 1 things. Well, that depends on i, doesn't it? Because there's an i in the formula. Yes? Okay, so 
if there's an i in the formula, it depends on i. There's also an n in the formula, but n is a fixed quantity from the get-go, right? Just the length of the array. So if i is zero, how many times does the inner loop run? It runs n minus one times. n minus zero minus one. If i is uh, n minus two, which is the last value it could be, how many times does the inner loop run? Well, it runs from zero to n minus, n minus one, minus one. Okay, and so what would that be? Uh, right, it would be, I guess, what, one time? Okay, so let's write that out. Um, do you guys mind if I erase the bottom loop? Is that okay? All right, thank you, because uh, I just need space here. All right, so. Okay, that would run n minus one times. All right, do we buy that? Okay, now i is one. Well, n minus one minus one is really n minus two, right? So now the inner loop is range zero to n minus two. How many times does that run? Uh, careful. How many times does that run? What's the last value of j? n minus three, but because we start counting at zero, we did it n minus two times. Okay, so for the first value of i, how many times does the inner loop run? n minus two. For the second value of i, how many times does the inner loop run? n minus three. Or did I say that? No, sorry, I said that backwards. Uh, for i equals zero, how many times does the inner loop run? n minus one times. For i equals one, how many times does the inner loop run? minus two. For i equals two, how many times does the inner loop run? n minus three. For and so on, okay. So let's go down to the bottom here. So if I do the old dot, dot, dot trick that we do in math, which is to say, you should notice a pattern by now. All right, suppose, what's the biggest value that I could be? Well, let's go back up to our code. What's the biggest value I can be? E in minus two. Huh? Man, I nothing nothing like getting a code thrown at your face at eight in the morning, right? What do you guys think? Well, I've got good news for all of you. How many of you want to take CS one eleven next semester? Just a quick show of hands. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's it? Huh? If you have space, you will. Okay. All right. So some of you guys, right? Maybe 10, roughly, out of this sorry lot. Uh, you don't want to take it? Oh, you did? Okay. Sorry. Your, your, your nose diaper is... Have you seen the South Park uh, pandemic special? No, you haven't. Yeah. Go watch it. Um, so, anyway. Um, it's pretty disgusting, though, so don't watch it if your parents are around. Last week. Like, Thursday last week. Uh, I think it's free on YouTube. Yeah. For a limited time. I'm sure they'll put it on HBO behind a paywall before long, but... Thank you.
together. Yeah. So, um, okay. So the dot dot dot. Right. What's the largest value of i that we ever get? N minus two. Okay. So the inner loop is range n minus i minus 1. Right? Let's look back up at the code. That right there, right? What's the last value or the, the thing that I wrote in the range? n minus i minus 1. Well, what is i right now? n minus 2. So I just replaced i with n minus 2. Okay, and that means that I have range, really, of n minus, and it's not parentheses if you don't have the sound effect to go with it. Okay, n minus 2, and then minus 1. All right, now we're not idiots. Um, last time I checked, yes. Okay, so this is really what this says is, range of one, right? Because we can do algebra. All right, so how many times does the inner lo loop run at the very end of the outer loop? Just once. Now that makes sense, because think about what the bubble sort is doing. Once we get the shit at the far right hand ends dealt with, we're only like, we're the bubble sort algorithm you get something all the way to the far right, and then you're only looking at the last, all but the last card. And then the next step, you're looking at all but the last two cards, because you already got them where they need to be. And then all but the last three, and all but the last four, and so on. And then finally, you get to the one at the bottom, and you're like, oh, good, I'm done. Right? So you're doing the comparison at the very end of the very first two cards. But you only do that one comparison because everything else has already been sorted. So that makes sense, right? Yes? Okay, so how much work did we do here? Well, how many times did the inner loop run is the question. Well, this is a bit of a pickle because how many times did the inner loop run for, for i equals zero, it ran this many times. And for i equals one, it ran that many times. And for i equals n minus two, it ran that many times. So how many times total did it run? Well, we have to do some algebra. Well, what am I gonna do here? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna take one plus, what's the number right above it? Two, three, four, dot, 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 n minus two, n minus one. I need to add all those things up, right? Yes? Okay. You guys can't see the smirk under my mask, but we need to, so the inner loop runs one plus two plus three plus dot, 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 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 1 times. Does anybody recognize that kind of sequence or things that we're adding up? All right, I'm going to give you guys a, a famous arithmetic problem. Take the numbers from 1 to 100. I want you to tell me the answer to the following question. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 plus 100. Go. You have two seconds. Eat. The answer is 50 50. How the hell did I get that so fast? Ah. Okay, what's the stupid way to answer this question? To add them all up manually. And be like, okay, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15, right? All the way up to 100. That's the stupid way to do it. 
What's the smart way to do it? Well, not well, not not do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, fair. How many of you guys have seen the movie War Games? This is from the eighties. Yeah. And what's what's the 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 best quote from that movie? The computer is like, "This is a strange game. The only winning move is to is not to play." Right, so how do you win the game of nuclear war? Don't play it. Yeah, it's like a simulation, and then like they think it's real and actually going to launch missiles, and everybody's freaking out because. Yeah. Okay, so, um, what's the fast way to answer that? Well, I want to add the numbers one through a hundred, right? What's 1 plus 100? 101, right? What's 2 plus 99? 101. What's 3 plus 98? And so what I'm doing is I'm pairing up the numbers. How many numbers do I have? 100. How many pairs, therefore, do I have? Each one adds up to 101, so the total is 50 times 101, or 5,050. Done. Right? We basically have that problem in front of us. I want to add the numbers 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 up through n minus 1. Okay, now what's different here is that I don't know the final value. I've got it in, in an algebraic sense rather than a fixed number like 100 like it did in my previous example. Okay, so we have to do some math. All right, so. Let's take a quick uh, digression here to talk about what these things are called are triangular numbers for a very good reason. And Coy is probably sitting online screaming because uh, this, you know, for a math major is obvious. Um, all right, so let me draw one, two, three. How many things are there there? Well, six, we can count, okay? But how do I want to think about why there are six? I want to think about it this way. I want to, well, let me scoot this down slightly. I want to think about that there are six by saying there are really 12, but it's half that, right? And I have three this way and four that way, one more than three, okay? So what's the total number of either black or green dots, either way? It's three times four over two, right? So if I had n things this way, then I would have how many this way? n plus one, and what would be the total number of dots? It would be n times n plus one over two. Because, all right, why is it n times n plus 1? Where's that part come from? Area, right? And then y over 2, because I only want half of the number, right? Or another way to think about that is, let's think back to the 1 through 100 example. What did I do? I paired up the numbers, so I had to divide by 2 because I'd reduced, you know, I had 100 numbers, but only 50 pairs. We? We know. Okay, so it turns out, why did I bring up these numbers? Well, look at what they are. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus, right? This is exactly the pattern that we have. Yes or no? Yeah? Okay. So, if I add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot, 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 plus n, the total comes out to be this. Okay, so what am I really adding here? I'm adding this stuff. So, 1 plus 2 plus dot, 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 up through n minus 1, the sum is what? Final value 
times final value plus 1 over 2. So that's how many times the inner loop runs in total. Mm -hmm. N minus one. Um, yeah, uh, if you did that, so here's the one issue. Um, this number is guaranteed to be an integer. Why? Huh? Well, I can't have half of a number, right? It doesn't make sense for this to total up to something 0.5, okay? But why does the formula n minus 1 times n, or this version over here, kind of same difference, why does that always give me a full number and never something with a 0.5 in it? Well, Bingo, right? So regardless of whether or not n is odd or even, precisely one of the numbers n and n minus 1, one of those is even and the other's odd, right? And so if I've got an even times something, well, the even is therefore divisible by 2, which means that that over 2 isn't going to cause a problem, right? So because math. Okay, so... Huh? Because math. Um, well, I guess it'd be kind of like, have you guys seen those things that occasionally go around Facebook? It's like funny, uh, funny things that students write on exams. And there's one of them like, it's like an elementary school thing. And it's like, draw a picture to show your thinking. And like the kid draws a stick figure of himself with like a, you know, like thought cloud going on. <laughs> yeah, here it is. You know, I used to have that on a t-shirt. Well, I used to have a t-shirt that had that on it. Uh, probably, I probably outgrew it. Let's just say I'm not as uh, thin as I used to be, Cole. Yeah, I used to be a toothpick, but whatever. And then college happened, or rather graduate school. That's where I gained a lot of weight. So, yeah, I started grad school at about 150. I finished grad school probably about 190. Lots of beer and coffee will do that. So, um, anyway. Uh, okay, so the sum total of how many times, how many operations we have to do at minimum is n minus 1 times n over 2. At maximum, it's double that. And the reason is, look back at our code. At best case, how many swaps do we have to do? What's the, In the absolute best world, how many swaps do I have to do in my cards? None, because they're all sorted already. Right? Okay. So at the best case, I still have to do a comparison, though, every time. Okay. So at the best case, the way I wrote this particular program, we execute the, we do this many operations because all of them are comparisons. Okay. At worst case, we do all of those comparisons and each comparison also has a swap. So at worst case, how many times do, does this thing, how many operations do I do? I do this times two, okay? That many of operations for comparisons, and that also that same number of operations of swaps, okay, which just gets rid of the over two. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so let's go back over to um, Safari. So that's what I did here. The minimum number of ops 
look at the little formula bar, or say, say here's the maximum number. That's the number of cards times the number of cards minus one, right? And then the minimum, theoretical minimum, is half that. Okay? And so I graph those, and now the graph's getting a little bit ridiculous here. Um, let's look at what we've got. So the, um, the red line here is the over two number, and the orangish one that's up here is the, um, well, actually, you know what? No, I need to redo the graph because it doesn't have everything here. So let's do, uh, where's the chart button? Chart, chart, chart. Here we go. Insert chart. And I want a line chart. Thank you, Google. And let's move this thing someplace more suitable. How about here? Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, there's two blue lines, the number of cards squared and the n times n minus one formula, and those are relatively close together, makes sense. Uh, and then in, uh, so this teal color is the, the theoretical maximum, like that's the worst case scenario that would happen if by dumb luck my cards were sorted in reverse order, okay? We never had that occur in our randomized trials because, well, it's just as likely or rather unlikely that you're going to get them all sorted in reverse order as they would be sorted in correct order, right? Not very likely to occur at random. Um, and so the bottom red line or orange or whatever color that is, uh, is the theoretical minimum as I implemented the algorithm. And I want to stress that because, oh, and we're a little over time, sorry, is that I thought about it for a while, and I'm like, this is inefficient. I've done a crappy job of encoding this. Okay, so um, anyway. All right, uh, for Friday, we're going to start talking on Friday about Scratch and doing some programming. So I will send you guys uh, some instructions through Canvas for something I'd like you to do before Friday. So do it before Friday and bring a laptop if you've got one. Okay. Today is Wednesday, right? Yeah, okay. All right, see you guys later.